Hello everybody, welcome to yet another episode on Hoop Room at Hoopsters.in, the League of Action Heroes. In our endeavor to bring to you discussions on subjects let's talk about, we are today in conversation with Rekha Kanemar, a yoga prana he- vidya healer and also is, a, is among senior most guides from the past four, 14 years. Okay, addressing the foreign tourists. But our discussion is not around yoga, but her journey as a mother to a 26 year old who is identified as mentally challenged with an IQ of 56%. 56, if I'm not wrong. She is here to tell us about how it's possible to manage a family of four, work at making a challenge child to be self-sufficient, even as she pursues her own dream, all at the same time, and still manages to keep a smile on her face. This is truly an inspiring story, and each one of us has something so much to learn from it. We at Hoopsters believe that the real stories are motivating, and we can learn something from the experience of others, especially when it comes to parenting. Thanks, Rekha. Thanks for coming on the show and uh, so let's begin with the first question why did you agree to come on this show uh, the reason why i agreed to come on this show because my son is now 26 years old and he's uh, specially challenged i mean he's got special abilities he's a child with special abilities and i have seen there are so many parents having children who are uh, uh, you know some special challenges in life they are so depressed and they feel as if they got the biggest challenge in life and they they feel that they are sacrificing their life just to make the life of the newborn so i thought no you are not doing anything you're just a mother like any other mother who's taking care of your own child and giving a life to that child and you can also have your own life and you can give life to the child and enjoy the journey of giving life to a new life so I, want, I have done it in my life, so I want to share it with everybody so that you don't have to be so depressed in life that you have a child like this. I want to give a message. Thanks, man. Thanks. It's very important because we at Hoopsters really believe that it's one of the real stories that can, you know, that can actually teach us a lot of things. You can lecture a lot about it, read a lot about it, but, I, you know, each yes. one has got different experiences and that's the best way to learn. Yes. So, Okay, tell us more about your early days, your dreams, your ambitions. You know? Yeah, as a before you're married, before you had yeah. a child. And... Yes, before before my marriage, I had taken computer science in uh, Saint Aloysius College, and I always uh, those days computer was just picking up. So our, as all all my friends are in US doing uh, some you know uh, something or other regarding computers. So I also wanted to do my masters in computers and uh, go to US. That was my dream. I have to go to US because all my friends are going to US when I want to go to US. So this was the only dream I had because in India, uh, you can't do anything in computers those days as a 21 years old girl. My thing was you can't do anything in computers in India. Whatever software program you have to do, it is in US. So at that time, my parents told, okay, fine, no problem. But uh, whatever you want, you can, st- you can study after marriage also. You can study. There are so many ladies. They get married. They continue their studies and they do something in their life and they pursue their career. So why you do you want to stop you know, getting married at the age of 22 to 25? Uh, like in 25 years back, that was a trend. The girl should get married once she finishes her college. So why, why do you want to stop? So you just get, your, uh, get married and pursue your career. So that was my dream. I have to get married. I have finished my degree. I've done my diploma course. I was working in MRPL, manual refinery, petroleum chemicals as a software programmer once i get married i will do my masters and once i do masters i will uh, continue as a software engineer so this was my dream but uh, what happened was as immediately after i got married i became pregnant and i got summer so okay after that my journey was with summer so at the age of 22 i got summer as my child so it, taking care of summer and making him a better citizen in uh, the world was my main motive compared to my dreams. So you 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 realize you are pregnant 21, 22, whatever you say. 22, yes. 22. So it, you must have been excited. You might have been, you know, all this should happen. So what what was that that period? What was the story in that period of your life? Yes, when I was yes I was very excited because uh, at that point of time my husband uh, had an offer to go to Dubai. 
so i had to be alone for two years so i was thinking oh i am pregnant now for two years i will after two years i was supposed to go to uh, come uh, join him in dubai so two years i have my child with me so he is a very the great company i have in my life for two years so nothing to uh, worry that my husband is uh, you know out of india for two years so i was really excited to take care of my i mean looking forward uh to see my child after 9 months so that period was very interesting for me so it was a great uh, journey but the thing what happened was uh, in the 6th month my doctor told that i needed chirurgical stitches because my uterus was uh, you know little low and any time i can have an abortion that's the time i got into trouble so okay fine me and my husband thought and let us go for chirurgical stitches the moment we put chirurgical I mean, the moment i put chirurgical stitches uh, my doctor said that uh, i had to take bed rest for 3 months next 3 months i had to be taking bed rest so okay fine let me take bed rest that is not a problem i thought so along with the bed rest what happened was she had pumped in with so much of iron tablets for me she had told that you know you have to take lot of iron now that you are taking bed rest you need to take all these tablets so she had given me lot of iron tablets and uh, when i was taking this iron tablets i was getting constipated so when i was getting constipated i had it was really difficult for me to pass my motions so i i used to struggle a lot according to doctor i am not supposed to put any kind of pressure in my body that's why i should take bed rest so any kind of pressure may you know uh, that should the knots of the should just may break and i will i get into trouble here at all so it was a biggest problem for me to deal with you know uh, my emotions tablets and uh, bed rest so it went on for some time with all these problems what i was having i developed a new problem i got a, a breast abscess in the eighth month and that breast abscess was very very bad all the breast abscess i got because of the pro- tablets i was taking because of the antibiotics i was taking because of the bed rest i developed breast abscess and this breast abscess had to be treated because uh, i developed fever and i became numb my body became numb at that point of time so i was i was staying 40 kilometers away sorry 20 kilometers away from the doctor's clinic that was my mom's place because i had to take bed rest there so when i was stay, i was uh, because of this breast abscess my parents decided to take me to the hospital then they decided to take me to the hospital by car those days it was raining heavily and the roads were very bad and too many potholes on the road and the car went and just sat on a pothole pothole and i got a severe jerk i felt there something happened in my stomach and it was very bad i developed a bad pain in the eighth month i was going for the breast abscess check up meanwhile i found that there is something wrong happened in my tummy because i was sleeping on my mother's lap and i just slipped there so when i slipped i felt that jerk in my stomach so immediately i went to the hospital i asked the doctor uh, i told the doctor when uh, when the doctor came to treat me for the breast tabs i said there is something wrong happening in my stomach the doctor said that your gynecologist will take care i am supposed to take care of my abscess i feel that there it got delayed so i was taken to the hospital i was taken to the ot to treat my abscess in the ot also i was telling you know there is some problem in my stomach please look into that yes we will definitely look into that first we will treat your abscess i had to go through a surgery at that point of time for my breast abscess so they they did that surgery they took me to the bed and i was sleeping in that uh, post operation uh, ward and i when i came to the conscious i felt there is something wrong and when i opened my eyes i was bleeding profusely and the blood had from the bed it dripped on the floor it, i was bleeding that way. then immediately i called the sister there's something wrong happening in my stomach i'm bleeding like the sisters and all they felt very scared and immediately they gave a call to the doctor and it was 7:30 in the evening 7:45 in the evening and doctor had gone to do one more surgery and she was able to come only at 10 o'clock so 7:30 to 10 o'clock they had to deal with me meanwhile there was a chirurgical stitches in the in my uterus they had to remove it in that stage again they take, took me to the operation theater this time they could not give me the uh, anesthesia because uh, I, they had already given me anesthesia when uh, they had given me when they had done breast taps they had given me anesthesia they could not give anesthesia again because the child will feel very drowsy and that is fatal for the child 
so without giving anesthesia they opened my uh, uterus and removed all the chirurgical stitches i had to go through that also then after that the doctor came at 10 o'clock and 10:30 was my surgery so it was from 5 o'clock in the evening to 10:30 in the night i was bleeding continuously and while after that 10:30 in the night then i was not in the conscious at all i did not know what happened then i got to know through my husband that my child in the stomach in my womb was o negative o positive and i am o negative so when i and when i had a small jump in the car there was an accidental hemorrhage my placenta with the placenta which was giving food connection for the child from my body got cut at that time so i was bleeding he was bleeding inside my uh, uterus inside my tummy and uh, the clots were getting formed that clot was you know jamming baby's brain and in the bargain he got brain hemorrhage in my uh, in the in my womb only he got a brain hemorrhage and uh, because of which you know when he was born he didn't breathe for one and a half minutes and that was a fatal for the child and he was uh, i mean when they did the scan they found that that he had a brain hemorrhage because he got uh, convulsion as soon as when he got uh, after one and a half minutes when he cried he got a convulsion so that's how they got to know that he had a brain hemorrhage and uh, this child is going to have a problem in life and immediately he was taken to the respirator and according to the doctor if my surgery was not done 10 if my surgery was done 10 minutes late I, my uterus wouldn't have been there 20 minutes late the child wouldn't have been there half an hour late i wouldn't have been there with the child and with everything i would have i wouldn't have been there so this is what doctor told then he took they took him to the respirator he was in the respir- respirator for uh, almost 4 to 5 days then from there he went to incubator for 10 to 15 days at that period of time the doctors the pediatricians realized that this child is not going to be all right so the doctors came and gave a choice to my husband and me so this child we don't know what kind of problem this going this child is going to have because he had a brain hemorrhage inside the womb and uh, he can have any amount of multiple problems he can have so he can come out as a vegetable so do you really want to have this child because he was given so many something every year from all over he was given drips to treat him to make keep him alive so do you really want to keep him alive that's the time me and my husband took a decision whatever it is he is our child he has come to this world he is fighting for his life if he had to go he would have gone because when when he did not breathe for one and a half minutes if he has if he has breath he has taken his breath after one and a half minutes means the child wants to leave and the child is struggling so when the child is struggling so much and fighting and saying that i want to come to this world and i want to live and even with so much of you know uh, what is the tubes everything the child is still going strong then we want this child to come to the world it is our child we want that's how we took a decision and today he is 26 years old and he is healthy and he is with us this wow. is the story of saman oh it's an amazing amazing you know experience and i'm sure it's not very it's not been very easy to deal with those right i must really say your husband took the right decision because yes. like you said yourself he was fighting for it and you know yes. it's your job to keep that fight going yes so what what are the first few months i mean you knew there was going to be an issue you know, okay so what are the first few months like what were you pre- what were you prepared for what were you not prepared for when the child came when doctor gave i saw the child after uh, 21 days so he was from here till here that's it this was the size of the child so when i saw the child like i am seeing my child after so much of struggle i am seeing my child and i was very happy to see the child but doctor said we have to watch the milestone and my husband he had seen many children in his life and he knew very well that uh, sorry my husband had seen many children in his life and when he saw the child he felt that that's going to be some issue with the child and we got to deal with the child so he knew that there is going to be some problem but for me it is my child and for a mother whatever child is her child and it's a child which she is looking forward to 
so i was keeping myself blank i did not even think that i am holding a child which can give me which can have some problem in his in its life i was holding the child thinking that i am holding my child who fought and came out as a winner in this world so that was the energy i was giving to the child you are a winner you have come you have fought and we are all there so me and my husband were sitting and telling we are there in your uh, you know fight for your life don't worry so this is a message me and my husband were giving and the first three months was very fine everything he was doing as per the milestones only after that we realized that he is little slow he was going slow because he was watching only towards one direction he was not watching towards other direction at all and his movements in one for one hand one leg it was very strong compared to the right i mean left hand left leg was very strong compared to the movements in the right hand and right leg uh, so even even when it was uh, moving this even when it was crawling he took long time to crawl because his then we realized that there is weakness in his right hand right leg after some time we realized it because the doctor was also observing the child he was also not knowing what is exactly child going through he said we have to observe the milestone and understand what the child is going through so after that you know we realized the doctor realized that his right side of the body is weak compared to the left side of the body because he had some uh, some portion of his left side of the uh, brain was damaged so in three when three months when we when the child was three months we did the scan through the scan we found out that uh, the child had a brain hemorrhage now after that this whatever uh, nerves they were uh, uh, I mean, the damaged they said that they formed something called as infarcts in the brain so we have to wait and watch what exactly do we have to do a surgery or do we have to leave we have to see this is what doctor told so we had to so there was a tablet called gardenal was given to the child every day so with that the child was very hyperactive was doing everything and thing. i used to find my child is normal my husband used to feel there is something abnormal and he was crawling from the 7th or 8th month till 1 year 10 months he was crawling he he was he was watching all the other children and walking but he was trying to walk but he was not able to walk he was just watching 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 we realized that this boy is a very good observer and trying to understand why he is not able to do which other children are able to do watching other children walking he walked on one year 10 months and that was a great victory for us because we also were feeling our child is not able to walk because doctor said there are there is kind of a weakness in his body he may or may not be able to walk so we wanted to see whether he'll be able to walk or not the first thing he was able to walk we were very happy yes the first milestone in life the child is walking we were very happy so we were taking one by one it's it's just been amazing very overwhelming if you ask me uh so what what happened after that what I mean, see right now it looks like a stroke correct you know it happened in your uterus and yes the symptoms are very close to having a stroke which is yes. what he had also with mm. the hemorrhage anyway so yeah. how did that lead to the rest of his journey you know rest of his milestones yes then one year what happened was when he was one year 10 months when he started to walk my in laws wanted to take him to bombay and no my my parents wanted to take him to bombay uh, surat kal Uh, my my parents house so they he was there for some time and by one year 10 months we did not realize that the tablet gardenal was very important in his life the gardenal is going it's going every day he's taking popping one tablet fine that was a 50 mg what he was taking and there the tablet was not given regularly so maybe once or twice they missed it then from there my in law said that they will take him to bombay for some time so there also one or two times or three times the tablet got missed um, then after that we we brought him back to mangalore and mangalore one day he got uh, a massive convulsion which remained for 20 minutes and we were all like the two two years old child struggling you know to breathe with a convulsion we like we could not see we couldn't understand what is happening then when we did the ct scan we found out that uh, he had uh, in certain some lc3 some place in the brain he had a damage and that has become infarcts and uh, 
because of this the control over the right portion of the body is uh, you know missing because of which uh, he is not able he won't be able to do himself all the activities which generally we derive from picking up an object right from anything he won't be able to do a command he won't be able to get command from the brain to do the jobs he has to understand that he can do it getting external command and also because of there is a, a short circuit in the brain whenever he is highly excited or highly depressed or what whatever if he is very angry he will get into this mode of getting convulsion so this has to be controlled so that's how we realize that whatever issue he is having is a very serious issue after that our journey towards taking out his convulsion from the life uh, started our only motive was to free him from this convulsion so for which you know we met many neurosurgeons many doctors because he was getting convulsion every month he must have got almost 150 plus convulsion in his lifetime and every convulsion when two years when he was just two to three years when we did his iq he was 84% and because of this continuous convulsion his iq was coming down and different kinds of uh, combination tablets from different kind different neurosurgeon not able to treat his convulsions at all whatever tablets i was giving for any combination of tablets we were giving him this convulsion was continuously coming in his life and this convulsion was bringing him you know backwards so from 84 iq he came to 64 from 64 he came to 55 from 55 he came to 49 49% and from attention deficit hyperactive disorder uh, the uh, id card what he had from the government after after few years when i did the checkup the doctor said that he was mentally challenged with 49% iq and that was very painful for us because he was deteriorating right in front of us because of wrong combination of tablets which nobody could uh, you know control his convulsions then one day it was just deteriorating then one day me and my husband took a decision we will just move out anyway we are watching our son deteriorating coming down we will just move out of this uh, allopathy treatment for the convulsion and why can't we try some other alternative treatment so we moved to homeopathy let us see because see when your back is against the wall you will you want some other alternative also so we such we thought we just stopped and we went to a homeopathy some homeopathy doctor who was suggested by our relative and saying that you know he is a very good doctor why don't you go to him and try your luck so we took him to homeopathy because our only aim was just bring his con- convulsions into control so we took him to a homeopathy doctor and the homeopathy doctor told that na i am going to start my homeopathy medicine but if i have to start my homeopathy medicine you have to stop all the allopathy because allopathy and homeopathy they don't go together if you have confidence on in me and if you are ready to take out your allo- stop your allopathy medicines then i will start my treatment some strong decision we took in our life that day i was giving combination of unt- until then i was giving combination of allopathy medicines to him i said yes i'm going to stop he told in the process once he'll get a major convulsion and in this convulsion he may live or anything may happen with him you should be ready for that if you are ready for that i will start my treatment i said yes we are ready for that because we because we wanted our son we only want we were all we were understanding is we want our son to be all right he should not have any convulsion if the convulsion stops i can work on him if the convulsion is there it is only bringing him back so i thought let let us see whether it is going to work or not i started homeopathy medicine and what happened was within one week he got a major convulsion major convulsion the convulsion remained for 20 minutes after 10 years he got the same major convulsion and i we called the homeopathy doctor homeopathy doctor said just leave him like that pop in some tablets whatever i have i have suggested he will be all right he said then i popped in the tablets and we saw he was all right and fine i said how is he doctor asked i said he is fine he is fine now he is going to be fine very good he said then after that our journey with the homeopathy treatment started with our son trust me we started the homeopathy 
medicine at the age of 13 13 i think 13 to 15 16 no convulsion at all no convulsion not a single convulsion between 13 to 16 when that homeopathy doctor was treating him until 13 he had 150 plus convulsion with all combination tablets he was getting 150 convulsion but next four years zero convulsion that was the only convulsion he got which went for 20 minutes after that absolutely no convulsion so i was very happy that my son did not get any convulsion for four years so i used that four years to teach him life skills lot of life skills i taught him in that four years but meanwhile what we did is when the child was going through a lot of this one issues initial years three four years when the child was observed he understood that the child is observing and learning a lot it's very it was very difficult for me to sit and actually teach it but the child was learning through observation so we realized that this child is very good in uh, learning through visual and uh, visual auditory visual skills are very strong in the child so me and my husband decided let's go for a second child so when the ch second child is learning a lot of other things on its own observing the second child he will learn the basic necessities doing the basic life skills of life like you know having food taking bath cleaning himself after the motion bearing his stress all these were very because he had a weakness in the right portion of the body i really had a tough time to teach him i could not teach him till four years until he became four years when the child was three and a half years i got my second child and the second child is very smart he is a he is a mechanical engineer working in bangalore that's a boy when he was doing every single thing like a obedient child my elder son was sitting and observing how he is walking how he is doing so i when i was teaching the child to eat he is also watching and he is also trying to eat in the left hand everything he was learning in there because right hand was not working he, i was teaching everything in the left hand so he was watching the second boy learning to eat he was watching the second uh, second child how he is taking bath he is also he, he also learned to take bath he was watching the second child wearing dress he also learned so everything everything of life skills he learned watching the second child when the second child learned to clean himself after passing the motion he said if he is my younger brother if he can do i also can do i am anna he is tamma if tamma is doing then anna also should do mummy today onwards you are teaching me how to clean myself after i pass the motion i said yeah your brother is doing no you also learn so that's how he developed interest in learning everything watching the second child so it was with all his convulsion it was easy for me to teach the life skills having the second child how was his speech Arika? speech from the beginning is excellent absolutely no problem he was talking very well speaking very well but the thing was he was uh, when he was talking he was making his face like this right towards one so for which to make uh, the, the doctor told that there should be some problem with this tongue it can be treated through speech therapist so i took him to speech therapist and i took him to speech therapist for one year but actually speaking it did not come to any help for me because again for him I have been sitting with him and teaching him a lot of things. So he was, it was like mother is a teacher. So whatever she was teaching, he was not listening. So I used to come home and I used to teach the same thing. When I am teaching, he is listening. So it was for him throughout the life, mother is a teacher. There was no other teacher for him other than either he learned through observation, father or mother should learn. That's the time we decided that, you know, he needs to go to school. We had put him in some normal school where he was rejected. After that, we didn't have a proper school to put him. Then we thought we'll put him to a school where he has to understand that there's somebody else also can be a teacher. And he learned a lot of things in the school also. Wow, that is some story. So how did you get your grip on yourself the early days, you know? I'm sure it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy to the first three years. Then it was, I'm sure it wasn't easy to mm. get to the second child. You know, the fears would have yes. been there. Yes. Okay. So, yes. and I, I know, and in your case, it seems to be very unfortunate. The medicine had an issue. The doctors had an issue. The mm -hmm. whole delay had an issue. You know, 
yes. it was like a series of accidents that seemed to be actually mm -hmm. the cause, if you look at it that way. So what was going into your mind? How did you understand what was happening? How did you try to learn more about um, the issue that you are facing? See, my actually the thing was in my mind in the beginning was I want to make him. I I took you know there were so many difficulties in teaching. Like it is very easy we are watching when the child is uh, taking a turn when the child from crawling and is walking. It looks for us very easy. The child is learning on its own. But I have realized. Both me and my husband, when we were watching, we realized that how much difficult for a child from crawling to walking. Because we have seen our son struggling. So what we both of us decided is, we will take one thing at a time. Okay, now he walked. So we did not think of anything. Because if you think of so many things, what can be the future with the child? Who is going to take care of him after us? No, it's not going to help us at all. Right now our aim is, make the child independent make the child make sure that the child is not dependent on anybody else for its day to day activity because we have now we know very well that there is a weakness in the right portion of the body which is a permanent weakness which is not going to i mean uh, get reversed at all then he has to live with the weakness he has to live with the convulsion and he has to live with his brain damage so with this limitation how we can make him a better person so let us so both both of us focused only on this we did not go beyond this at all so we went so what we did is we just took every small life skill as our goal the first goal is right then second goal okay now he has to learn to eat on his own so then the third is now he should know how to wear his dress on his own because it was difficult what we see it is easy it is difficult it's a coordination of two i mean two uh, two palms and two fingers movement of fingers it was very difficult because his, his was only one hand so now he I, he had to learn to do bring his clothes on his body put you know uh, buttons all these things very difficult so it was we took every single thing as one small goals so okay we finished up this we finished up this we used to feel excited about this yes he has learned it so we brought excitement in our life seeing these small small things Otherwise, if you see the people used to come, there were people in between coming and telling, oh, who's going to take care of your child now? They have gone after 50 years. And we don't blame them because that's how people think. Who's going to take care of your child after 50 years? After you, who's going to, have you thought of it? I said, I don't want to think of it. Right now, I want to think that he, he should be able to do this. So we never went ahead. We just took every step as it comes and we enjoyed after reaching that step so our life was very simple and very exciting with every milestone passing. So this is how we took our uh, initial days of life. No, it's wonderful you're saying saying it is exciting. No, it's not. A, it's, yes. it's an amazing word to use in a situation like yours. So what happened to that? What about the relatives and the close friend circle and stuff? How are they dealing with you? Because most of the time the problem is the external factors. Yes. You know, normally the yes. husband, wife somehow get to manage and they have an understanding. But the influence of outsiders, yes. you know, could be yes, extended yes. family, some neighbors and friends. They are the ones who actually create a lot of issues. Yes. How would you See, treat in your case? Yes, what happened is, in, a, in my case, my parents were very supportive. My sisters, my brothers, they were very supportive. And my husband's uh, parents, my in-laws were very supportive. And my husband, sister's family was also very supportive and immediate relatives were very supportive. So I did not have any issues as far as relatives, friends were concerned. But yes, when we used to go to common parties and common functions, there people used to feel that, you know, why did, why did, why did this couple bring this child? It was not necessary for them to bring the child. But we were not like that because we wanted our child to understand how to be in the society because of which you know we used to take him to every single place even when i when i used to go we used to go to parties we used to take the child whenever we used to go to functions we used to take the child go to uh, relatives house relatives place we used to take because he, he should know how to behave in every place if we make if we just keep him at home saying that oh he is a child who wants to be in his comfort zone then that will be his shell for the rest of his life. So 
we thought why can't let us at least expose him to all these different kinds of places and understand that you know how he is reacting and whether he is happy being with them or not happy being with them so we brought he realized that you know every child like the company of people they like it's only the people who make them uncomfortable the child like to be with everybody people make them uncomfortable yes here also there were lot of people coming and trying to talk to him to see how he is reacting how he is talking what is his body language but what we did is i was making sure that my whenever somebody talks to my child i am there next to him to make sure other people do not make him uncomfortable so so i used to be there my husband used to be there or my extended family like my parents or my in laws they used to watch how other people are reacting to his talks or behavior and if they make him uncomfortable how to make him comfortable in that environment so this kind of support i had so because of which you know today also even when i'm going to kitty party even when we are going to parties restaurants even when we are going to any big functions you know where my husband uh, we are called as you know main guest in that function my son comes he is very well behaved absolutely fine because he has been used to going like this from the beginning so this is a main advice i give to all the parents you know because i've seen so many places so many parents have seen oh no like you know you know no my son or my daughter she is like this they can't get i said no you have to get it. otherwise your life will become uncomfortable because your life is uncomfortable you will put the, all the blame on the child saying that my life i have sacrificed my life for the sake of the child no there is no sacrifice we are happily doing whatever we are doing with our child so the moment you add sacrifice uh, sacrifice my life for this 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 then there is a pain sacrifice is a pain nobody does any sacrifice everybody everybody is doing because they want to do it the word sacrifice according to me is negative you have taken a choice that i am going to leave the child at home you have not sacrificed your fun so i said don't use a word sacrifice if you feel that you have sacrificed you are sacrificing your life then take your son and come for the function or you sit at home happily teaching something with the child don't use a word sacrifice me and my husband we have never used a word sacrifice so we never felt that you know child was liability for us child was always an asset for us in our life he has never troubled us at all you had you had i mean your two sons okay and uh, yes. i'm sure as they're growing they're just 3 years difference yes. so at the time they were say samarth was about 10 Mm -hmm. other, I, I don't know the other, other son's name, but uh, it's Saksha. It's Saksha, okay. He was seven and all. So yes. when you to take both these kids to where do you go, wherever you go, I mean, yes. you should take both of them. Yes. How was it? How was the brotherhood? How was who was taking care of whom, or how was it? From the childhood, my it, it so happens I have always seen when the first child is, uh, you know. needs external help when you have a second child the maturity with the maturity level in the second child grows from the beginning you know so i have what i was seeing is when i was struggling to teach him some life skills for the elder one see younger one is doing like this why don't you like you know putting it's a simple thing putting button of the shirt he was when i finding difficult the younger one used to come mummy wait i will teach he used to tell and he used to come and he used to put the button so what happens is you know if the children are taught well the second child will take the responsibility so in my case always till the end even today my younger brother my younger son is like an elder son he takes care of the younger one wherever he goes mummy don't worry i am there so for which you know we have to build that kind of relationship we have to see that the two children are building that kind of relationship otherwise what happens the second child will feel conscious about the elder one but we have brought both the children in such a way that younger one was always protective about the elder one and the elder one knows that if the younger one is there i am very comfortable so because of this i had absolutely no problem and today also today my younger son is 23 years old my young, elder son is 26 years old even today when we go for any holiday we go as family four of us it is not that my younger son who is 23 mummy i am feeling uncomfortable with anna i don't want him to come no never ever said wherever we go we go as 
four people as family holidays and come back so this is a relation because i also know when sakshat comes he is there to take care of someone i can have something of my own when uh, sakshat wants to do something i am there to take care of someone so and my husband is there to take care of everybody so it is like a family together we are going in the function and we enjoy the function like we enjoy the holiday like any other people enjoy the holiday and come so it is never a problem having a second son normal and a first son you know special would you actually advise this to for parents definitely definitely what i advise is when you i have seen i have been telling in my talks also when you normally when you have a special child as a first child you don't go for a second child because you say no we have to focus so much on the first child that you won't be having time to take care of the second child no that's the biggest mistake people are doing in life because they put so much of focus and they think that they're doing one big great service to the society bringing up the small child uh, bringing up the special child no it is your child whether the child is got problem or whether the child is not having a problem for a mother father it's your child and you are bringing up the child in the same way the way you are bringing up any other children i say who is not having problem with the children you know if we have problems in teaching life skill to the children there are so many parents who are having problem with their children in the behavioral problem they have with their teenage children the mother in law daughter in law have a problem because son got married and he got a daughter in law and there is a difference they have a problem with the uh, son so all these kinds of problem everybody is problem is different kinds of problem but problem is there with their child whether the normal child or a special child that problem is there until the end parents try to deal with the problem then why do you say that this is a special problem this is a problem you have to understand that how to deal in your life one of the problem so i said don't you ever think that you are doing a great sacrifice because you do not go on for a second child and focusing on this child no you have to have a second child you have and that second child is a motivation for the first child if the first child is a special child the first child lot of things the children will understand by watching another child not by parents telling that you do this you do this when you say you do this you don't do this that becomes a pressure for this normal child only it becomes a pressure understand what will happen to the special child so the child will learn everything by observing another child so it is very important that you have another child also and make your special child a better child this is the advice i give yeah it's so true so really true But Ramya, what about when he was growing up? What about his friend circle? See, I'm sure there are. You know, one was his own. He was older, so I'm sure he yes. had uh, his own circle of friends. Then he also mm-hmm. saw his younger brother's friends coming over and interacting. What was yes. that? Di- what was that dynamic like? See, when my younger son was growing, everything in his life, as I told, he learned from his elder son. When my elder son wanted was started going to school, he the my young my younger son started going to school. my elder son said that i also want to go to school that's the time we decided to put him to a special school school we want to go because he was being rejected from all the schools saying that he is hyperactive in the school and we don't want this child in the class so he was being rejected so two years i kept him at home so when the younger son started going to the school i said you also want to go to school then see uh, yeah everybody uh, sa- sa- sakshat is a very good boy in the school you also have to be a good boy in the school when you are a good boy how sakshat is going and coming you will also go and come i said that's so he thought i have to go to school wearing uniform sakshat is going i will be a good boy so he started going to the school and then after some time sakshat's friends started coming home so he had in his mind when sakshat's friends are coming home why my friends are not coming home so i told him see your friends are very far from this place sakshat's friends are very closer to this place so sakshat's friends are coming home and what we did is few of our relatives and she is your friend she is your friend if sakshat has got these friends you have these friends it was affecting him sakshat has got friends why i don't have friends so when we realized that when sakshat got friends we also showed a couple of people couple of uh, girls and boys of his age and we told them tell that you are there you are his friend so yes mummy these are my friends so friends friends so that was equal for him sakshat has got friends i also have friends so it was working for me then after some time sakshat started going to friends place 
and uh, sleep over all these things, meeting his friends, going out with his friends. So he was telling, same, the problem is there. He was telling, Mommy, Sakshat is going and meeting his friends. Sakshat is going to hotel. Sakshat is going to beach with his friends. Why my, I am not going with my friends to beach? So I said, you can go to beach. I said, I said you go. Sakshat is going with his friends. If Sakshat is going with his friends, you also go. Say, Ajay Dodda are your friends. Uh, so uh, bomb, uh, my in-laws, like, you know, bomb with Ajay Dodda are your friends. Uh, your mamas are your friends. Go with them to beach. Go with them to hotel. So we have to bring some understanding for the child. So he is to go out with them. The Sakshat is going with them. I am going with these people. So we have made sure that he feels normal here. He doesn't feel, you know, he is different from his younger brother. But we have to bring an environment like that. If you tell, yeah, you have problem, no, because of which you don't have. You understand Babu. Means the child will understand that I am, I am having a problem because of which I am like this. I have to sit at home. He never ever made him feel that he is different. If Sakshat has got his friends, you have your friends. If Sakshat is going out with his friends, you are going out with Ajadoda as your friends. So he is to go to beach, he is to go to hotel with them. So he is also doing something, so he is to get satisfaction in that. Even today, till date, it is going in that. Rekha, whatever you learned, okay, mm-hmm. it's not something that is taught to anybody. Okay? No, no. And you are 22 year old when you got your child. Okay, yes. your husband mm-hmm. can't be very much older. Okay. Yes. So, looking at two youngsters who had this child, the whole trauma around it, how, what, and how did you develop the knowledge of being what you are, okay, without breaking down? Mm-hmm. How did you learn the patience? How mm-hmm. did you learn what to do? I mean, it's not something which is natural, what you're doing. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, fine, you had your support of your family, you had a support of your husband, both are together. Mm-hmm. That's fair enough. But then it still requires a certain attitude. Yes. Right? Because the pressure of I'm 22, come on, you know, it's it mm. must be shocking as hell. Okay. Mm. So how did you get into that? I think that's where people fail. The people don't fail any other way because mm. they also want to be good to their children. They also want to take care of children. But somewhere they don't get that attitude to do this. Yes. Even if they got support. Mm. So how did you get it out? How did you see, develop I, it? See, when uh, in the schools and college, I was always the topper. So that thing was there in my... I had... Because see, when you say I was a topper in studies, we draw a flow chart to study. It is not that when you study, you just study randomly in the end and you get your marks and you score and you get... So there's a flow chart to draw. So if you want in the final exam to score also, when you know that I have to score in this exam, you make a timetable and you draw the flow chart and you study so, and you reach your goal. The goal is getting good, uh, good marks in the exam or being a topper in the class. So that steps, I used to always, right from the beginning, I used to, you know, I, I'm very good in making a clean reach to my goal. Like, how do I do? Suppose three months from now, if I have to study for the exam, in three months, how do I split it for, you know, every month, what is my job? In every month, if I have to do every week, what is my job? Then every day, what is my job? I'm very good in splitting my jobs. So this art I had learned on my own when as a student, because I wanted to uh, do well in my education career. Because I've always had that, you know, I want to work as a software engineer, doing master of computer application for which we had to score a good mark. So it was always there in my mind. So when I got the child at the age of 22, I knew that I have to do a lot of things with this child. I have to, for me, the top score was make him independent. I have to, because when I got to know that this child had a brain hemorrhage and He's a fighter, he's left, like, you know, he's, he really fought in his life to live and he had a brain hemorrhage and one side weakness and the uh, doctor told we have to wait and watch what other things he, he will be having in his life. I thought my only, my only uh, thing in my mind was, I have to, my goal was, I have to make him independent. So that was my top score, which I, I had always to always say, I want to be a topper in the class. So instead of topper in the class, at the age of 22, I said, the topper is, I want to make him independent. So to make him independent, what are the things I have to do? So all these things I drew as a flowchart. 
because flow chart drawing i had learned in my uh, software class when i was doing my degree so i knew how to draw the flow chart i have to do so whatever i studied i said okay people study to do well in their career i studied i did everything to bring this child up and make this child a better person in the society so i will use my this is my career in life so i thought after marriage my focus was so it was never so this i had taken as my career making my child independent so when you take something as your career in life that is never you know uh, depressing or discouraging for you that is encouraging for you so one one step when the child was doing i was also very happy and i was equally excited and i was able to okay now next i will do this how people say okay i'll change my job i want to get a better promotion now this is my i should get a better job in a better company so i should put a bigger goal with a bigger you know mark uh, range so it was like that so i thought whenever you used to do this at yes this is my second job this is my third job fourth job so it was like that so because because of that i used to feel very happy i said i achieved it i achieved it i achieved it and you won't believe in the age of 18 sorry in the age of 20 my son was i am i live in mangalore he he had understood i had trained him for computers and he was doing he was trained for microsoft word excel and he was also trained to be a data entry operator and he was made to walk on the ramp as a celebrity child uh, for a product called you know desi uh, khadi in mangalore in the celebrity walk fashion show he was made to walk and that was the greatest achievement for me because when i look back it was the greatest achievement for me that my son walked on the celebrity uh, fashion show where he had to wear a khadi and uh, walk on the ramp oh, that must have been a you know great moment coming to careers i mean you're also a, a successful yoga expert and you know you do a lot of things on your own now where the hell do you find time to do these things or yes. when did you start it yes and again if you ask me it is my child because uh, when he was getting i told till 15 till 15 years the homeopathy doctor was there to treat my child so i was very happy that my son was taking very good care i mean was was under good hand unfortunately the doctor got some infection in his kidney and he expired when my son was 16 and my son was left with no doctors now which because homeopathy is always a combination of tablets and combination of tablets was not working on him but there any other combination which i used to take him to some other homeopathy doctors it was not working so again at the age of 16 his convulsion came back it was not coming to control then i realized why at the age of 16 why is getting convulsion he is getting convulsion because his mind is not coming in control so first if i teach him to control his mind then he will not get convulsion i taught like that for which you know i thought to teach him how to control his mind i should know the tool to control the mind so i went in search of the tool to control the mind that's the time i got to know there is something called meditation until then there was nothing called meditation in my life so i learned i understood what is this meditation i want to learn so i went to i learned different kinds of meditation to understand what is meditation how to focus on yourself how to concentrate how to close your eyes how to keep a control on the mind all these things so i learned that to see whether my son can do it or not so i learned different kinds of pranayams because i realized i read many books you know this through this breathing you can you can get lot because i knew that he is getting convulsion because at times when he gets you know excited lack of oxygen in the brain and when there is lack of oxygen he gets convulsion so i wanted to see that oxygen flow for the brain is constant when how to make it constant when i went through certain i did my research i came to know that if you do the breathing exercise of the oxygen flow to the brain in whatever kind of point then i thought it's like learn pranayam and see how the i learned meditation i learned all these things to teach myself 
yoga because i said for him the best teacher is his he learned but today my son can close his eyes and sit for one hour i taught him how to do meditation i taught him some of the breathing exercises i taught him some of the yoga so doing through this yoga breathing exercises and meditation you won't believe 16 year at the age of 16 he got convulsion and his medication stopped after that we are not given any medication he is 23 now no convulsion at all absolutely no convulsion it is just because we externally making sure that his brain is calm we are not doing anything where he gets excited because he is a very scheduled boy everything should be on time everything should be in schedule so we are making sure that it is good for us also we are also learning so many things because of him so we make sure that everything on a schedule everything happens on the schedule everything happens on time if it doesn't on happen on time we have to give him an explanation why it is not happening when you give an explanation properly he understand it okay because of this time only or if he say no that's the way it is he yeah, why 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 that becomes very big uh, why for him and it gets into convulsion so if he give an explanation why we are changing the program he understands it why he understands it because we have given that understanding capacity externally by making him do pranayam making him do meditation and giving teaching him yoga so that has helped him a lot so if i have helped my son in becoming a better person out of medication then why can't i teach other people who are you know having so much of uh, issues with the keeping their mind calm so that's how i i became a yoga teacher teaching meditation pranayam you know everything that's how i have taken it as a career so whatever i have taken as a career it was for my son actually i put it on i exp- I, i tried on my son successful if it is successful on my son let me teach others also it will be easier for me that's how i did it it's amazing yeah absolutely amazing okay i would ask the participants if they have any questions they can type it down on chat thing we are running short of time but no i just need i still need to ask these questions and we shall continue with this uh rekha one of the things with uh, when i talk to parents with uh, not just special child any kind of issues mm-hmm. the first thing that i hear about is a guilt feel yes you know, parents feel a lot of guilt if mm-hmm. something bad happens with their child okay mm-hmm. so what 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 is your thoughts on that what are your what, what kind of guilt oh that you know because of me oh i should have done this oh i should have done that you know yes yes the whole factor is that they blame themselves to what happened no see when you are so whatever the parents are doing for the child they are doing their best when you are doing your best for the child you will have in your mind i did my best and when you have done your best there is no guilt feeling whatever i could do whatever i felt like doing i have done for my child because i am a mother of a normal child i am a mother of a special child my normal child has studied through distinction he got distinction and uh, through merits he's gone to ps university and he did his uh, mechanical engineering he's working in a very good company so we have paid attention for both the children not that you know my because i have a special child my focus was completely on the special child not focused on my normal child how much i have focused on my special child that much i have focused on my normal child that much i have focused on my career so everything was equal so i don't have any guilt feeling or anything to say that you know i have not done any i could have done better here i could have done better there i could have done both me and my husband we feel that we have done the best what we could do for the elder one for the younger one and in our life also so when you are giving your best there is no guilt feeling guilt feeling comes when you know that you are not done your best so i feel as a parents you have to do the best and when you are done the best there is absolutely no guilt feeling this one one thing interesting people normally blame time you know yes they blame time they blame the fact that uh, you know how do you put it hello yeah. oh he is my son hi how are you hi. hey say yes. hello hi Say hello. Come hello. on, say hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome, sit, sit if you want. Hi. Drag a chair. Yes. Put a chair and sit. Drag a chair. Drag. That's wonderful. So get, get, nice. Get one chair. Yes. Get one chair. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. You know. So. Tell me. Ah, uh, where was I? Yeah. So, how do you people worry about time? Every time I hear people, there is time hmm. issue. Okay. They can't manage What their own mean? life. I know they just don't yes. seem to have time in their life. Uh, yes yes uh rekha you can move to your right i can have samaj coming in slightly yeah samaj hey samaj coming yes yes 
So how do you manage time? I think that's the biggest issue people are facing. Yes, actually the time management I learned from my son. Because <laughs> you, everything, that's what I said. No, it's a great blessing to have a child like this because they are, what they want, they want everything on time. He want his breakfast on time. He want his lunch on time. He want his dinner on time. He wants his homework on time. He wants his, his me time, like his time. He wants his, his face on the five o'clock to six o'clock is his time. He will do what he wants to do. So when I have to give time to him, then I thought if I have, if I'm paying so much of attention to him, then my younger son also would want his time. And he also wants everything in time. So my husband and myself. So what happens is, you know, we will learn if you are a keen learner, for which you have to be a keen learner. You, God has given you 24 hours. You need only eight hours to sleep. When you take only 8 hours to sleep, you still left with 16 hours. 16 hours is a lot of time. You can do wonders in the 16 hours. This is what I thought. So, when he says that he wants his things on time, means he can do everything on time and still will be left with time. That's how I thought, give time for my husband, give time for my son, give time for myself and give time for elders. And that became a way of, once you do something for 21 days, then it becomes a way of life for you. That's how, you know, you, you will learn something when you do for 21 hours, 21 days, it becomes a way of life and that will be your life schedule. So that's so. Taking out time is not at all difficult for me. I totally, totally second you on that. I think it's the one lesson which people must learn, you know. And it's, yes. it's really sad when everybody says there's no time, you know. Yes, yes. I don't know, I don't know what we can. When, when they the, I believe that, you know, somebody says that I no time, they are totally... You know, unscheduled people. They don't have their schedule because of which they say that there is no time. If you are at, or that is the last priority in their life. Exactly, exactly. If, if it is a priority, they will take out time and they will make sure that it happens in their life. Yeah, they just don't see their priorities in their yes. life. So he's sitting and watching you very much. Hey, do you want to say something? Say hello, uncle, and yes, I'm going to. Do you want to say what something? Uh, hello. Hello. Hey, hello, uncle. You want to say something? Um, he's he's crazy. shocked. Um, he's shocked. Yes. Why? <laughs> because he's. I'm talking to you, and he's, he doesn't know what. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll come soon to Mangalore and meet you. Uh, what's the month? Say okay. 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 I, I saw you. Saw you in the day. I'm also. I mean, my my in the mobile also. I saw you. The mobile my mother so. spoke. To, I heard my mother speaking to you. Yeah. I heard, I heard my mother speaking to you. Even I saw you. I saw oh, you also. In my, in my husband's yes. cell. <laughs> Good. So did you, are you enjoying what we are talking? Huh? Are you enjoying what we are talking? He's asking. Yeah. yeah. I, Very good. I, I, you want to say something? Yeah. You want to say something somewhat? Yeah. Hey. See, did, did, See, yeah, yesterday I did Excel, today I did micro, today I did micro software, I, like I did Excel, yeah, Excel I did yesterday. Wow. Now my mother made me do micro software, everything I know. How comfortable are you? Very comfortable? Yeah, very comfortable. Micro, they're doing stories, and how I do in, how I do in my real learning center, I do everything. My real learning center also I learned everything, micro. Software, Excel, data entry, everything I'm doing. I'm doing. I nice. know everything. Well, Microsoft, what I'm doing in the morning, uh -huh. afternoon, afternoon, yeah, after lunch, after again, I do two o'clock. I do Microsoft. Three o'clock, I do data entry. If there is still time, I do. When there is still time, I do data entry. Four oh, o'clock, I stop. Then what do you do? Four o'clock, I stop. My mother. I can't do, I can't do more. My mother will come, my mother will come, I come. Hey, what does your mother do? No, my mother will come and bring, come and bring me. Then I have to, I have to stop at 4 o'clock. <laughs> 3 o'clock I'll do. 4 o'clock I have to stop. Why? 4 o'clock I wait for my, my mom. My mother wait for my mother. So what you do you do after 4 o'clock? <laughs> what do you do after 4 o'clock? Some music at 1 o'clock. Okay, go. Oh, okay, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't say it. Okay. Yeah.
Okay. Bye. 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 See you. See you soon. So lovely. Thank you. Uh, beautiful. Okay. He was he was seeing my, my husband, so he came to Nice. 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 You know, made him stay here. It's okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Let's get to some basic things. See, the problem is people normally do not know how to deal with others who are challenged. You know, yes. they get nervous, they get uncomfortable and that shows in the way they react, you know, either they run away from the person or they make fools of themselves, you know, or they get in shock. So what is your, your advice to these kind of people? You mean, you mean to say not the parents, others, others, others. See, the issue yes. is not the parents. Most parents yes. It's always yes. the others. You know? See what, what we have done, me and my husband are we have made everybody clear that yes even i dealt with that problem it's like you know indirectly they'll say you are coming or your family is coming like when you're coming to the function you are coming or your family is coming it means that you are coming or you're getting your son and coming so we made it very clear to everybody it is not me and my husband or it is not me and santosh and his wife it is santosh his wife and his child so if we are coming it is we three it is not going to be only we two. So if you are accepting V3, we are there. If you are not accepting one of us also, we are not there. So this is an approach we had right from the beginning. So because of which, if we only see, if we only feel in our mind that, oh, my child is going to become a hindrance in this function. That is why I, I don't want to bring the child. Huh? Then people also can feel that energy and when you, with, with this feeling, when you get the child, that energy somehow will touch the people. Why? Because I know he's like this. No, that's why he's doing this. Yeah, it's okay, no? No problem. It's okay. You should have left it at home. They will say. If we are confident, if you are very clear that when I am there, my child is there. If you want to accept us, you have to accept the child also. I'll make sure that my child is not a nuisance out there. It is my responsibility to see that my child is not a nuisance out there. But... My child is there with me wherever I go. If that kind of attitude, if as parents, when we have, then the people will accept us with the child. People will accept child, whether we are there or not, they will accept the child. If this attitude of parents, you see, we cannot change others. We cannot change. We are not here to change the attitude of the people. People cannot change. They are what they are. But at least we can change our approach towards our life with the child. So if you are as confident as any other person having a normal child, attending any place with your child, then the people also will treat you in the same way. People are the mirror of what you feel. This is what I, I got to see. So again, my advice is not for the people, for the parents themselves, that you have to be confident. Yes. You know, there are also cases, these are, I'm going away from your story and getting your opinion on these things. You know, the, I hear, I have heard a lot of cases where the spouse, which could be the husband or the wife, most of, most often the husband, has yes. left the family because the child was born with an issue. Yes. What is your, your thoughts on this? I mean, what, I mean, your thought concerning both the person who walked out and the person who's dealing with this trauma. See, person who has walked out. See, I don't see. Yes, it is very wrong because the husband, the spouse has walked out because uh, he or she has got this kind of a child. But when the child is born, if somebody was see, actually, it is not the child. The some the people who are, the person who is going through trauma is the parents. You know, the husband or a wife because they are going to live with the child. The child is going to have a, obviously a good life because they are going to be under the shelter of the parents. So, if parents are given a right positive attitudes towards the child, uh, towards their life with the child at that moment from your surrounding, then this kind of surrounding means with the elders of the family or the family, uh, members of the family or your people around you, then this kind of attitude will not be taken. Unfortunately, some either one of the spouse, you know, if either the husband or wife, they will become a prey to the uh, negative vibes coming from the surrounding. When they get become a prey to the negative vibes coming from the surrounding, they are not able to take a decision and they just, one of them will walk off and the entire burden will come on the other one. So 
what i say is what has happened is wrong but at that point of time it is very important that you know husband and wife say that i am there for you you are there for me because you can't change people people are what they are because when the child was born when the child was born and i was having a 21 days old child in my hand also the immediate question was asked to me in the hospital by one of her relative is ee magu on nin life long nodukoltiya nin admele sorry in kannada i am telling you are going to take care of this child throughout the life after you who is going to take care oh my god isn't it going to become a burden for you for your life these are the kind of words i am getting in the hospital when i am carrying see my first child after 21 days you can change people but at least we can change our attitude you know i had my husband with me saying that i am there with you i and i was there with my husband saying that you are like an i am there with you we are going to bring this child if this understanding is there between husband and wife trust me they will not take this step the only reason why they are taking that this step is either one of them run, running away from the child is that kind of understanding is not there between the husband and wife so they have to be blamed again not the people or the child or anybody you build a strong understanding with your spouse it will not happen this is my take no i'm i'm there's only take i mean there's no other take yes. here if you ask me there's no other yes. take it's just mm-hmm. uh, what it is so let's go to we have taken too much of the time so i'm going to finish it in next 10 minutes yes rekha what has been your most rewarding moments most rewarding moments yes yes my very very simple things in life like uh, as i told when uh, as i can see the first thing was when my child you know if you think the first time i felt like oh i have done this when my child learned to clean himself after passing motions because i used to help him till 5 years 5 years of my life i was helping him to clean himself after passing motion because he knows to take bath because he just have to stand under the shower those days um, again you know the coordination of hands and this was not there and uh, he he learned to wear a shirt because he carry a shirt with zip not with buttons now he puts button everything he learned like that but how do we teach him how long i can teach him to brush his teeth properly or t- t- teach him to you know clean himself after passing motions when he learned that that was the greatest achievement for him i was very happy so that was that day both me and my husband in a yay he learned this now now we can leave him anywhere and go like you know we can leave him in mom's house or dad's or my in-laws or otherwise it's a burden who will take care of who will do this for the rest of their life so when he learned that now he knows to take part he can leave, have his food on his own he can wear his own clothes and he can clean himself and he can take care of himself so that was a, the final decision he can take care of himself so we can also have you know we can go out and come somewhere and live in in mom's place for one full day it's not going to trouble them you know he is not going to be a burden what like was that. your scariest moment my scariest moment is uh, moment was when i realized that you know my son gets convulsion every now and then like he got convulsion in the school he got convulsion in functions he got convulsion in the house in my absence now how do i how am i going to deal with this convulsion like when I, like i i used to those days i used to ride scooter and i cannot keep my son behind because he can get convulsion any time i can i can't drive a car with him because he can get convulsion any time because he showed that he can get convulsion any time how am i going to deal whenever he used to get uh, convulsion in wrong places that would be a scariest moment for me that's why i was focusing more on convulsion to stop that convulsion looking back how does it feel i mean i mean i just met your son i mean everything is terrific you know yes yes um i mean i met your husband today i met you and you know all that yes how does it feel to rekha looking back i am not finding myself different from any parents every parents have their own journey of struggle with their children because now i am 26 20 this is my 27th year of marriage and i have seen my friends 
dealing with lot my friends and my relatives dealing with lot of issues with their teenage children and uh, they are meeting the psychologist also the parents are meeting the psychologist they are making their children meet the the children are coming to me now i take this uh, i do psychotherapy for children and yoga prana vidya i do lot of psychotherapy i parents bring their children to me the you know the mother in law comes and says that you know i have a problem with my daughter in law i have a problem with my son the son comes and says that i have a problem with my mother and my wife not dealing with the which is giving me a lot of trauma huh? so i see that that's what i came to a conclusion i when you see problem is there in everybody's life in different ways many parents are come to me saying that you know my son is a druggy my son is a alcohol he takes a lot of you know he's uh, he's having uh, alcohol problems and how to deal with this or exam pressure he is not able to take because of that parents are going through trauma so when i look back i was not probably i must have i must have struggled in my initial stage with a different life skills but they also had their own journey with their education dealing with their children all these things so when i look back and see i'm nowhere finding that you know i did a great job or i did like any parents i also had a very nice journey to make my children capable of taking care of themselves and leading their own life with values this is what i am getting and i am very happy with that two different my elders my younger son is is a mechanical engineer in bangalore he is having his own life and he has got lot of values my elder son with all learning all these life skills he is leading his life with the values i am very happy like what other parents have done to their children i also have done with my children okay five tips to parents bringing up children with special needs quickly one yes, liner five yes. tips lot of patience positive attitude and uh, mirroring you have to understand what your child is mirroring is very important and keep them with the society don't exclude exclude them with the, from the society and enjoy the journey of your life with your child that is the energy you are giving to the child these are the five tips i want to give what can the society do at large to help people who are in the situation just accept them as they are the way we are accepting every religion every person and every human being we have, the society also have to think that they are also human being with their own capabilities and with their own limitations and accept them as they are everything is fine you know when your son was coming and telling about he knows excel he knows microsoft you know whatever yes. you know how the things i don't understand but anyway he knows all that which is very good mm-hmm. and today a lot of corporates talk about inclusiveness and stuff like that right yes uh, they got various terminologies uh, but inclusiveness is something which is everyone's talking about what do you think the corporate should do what they do you think do. see they he was working as a data entry operator till uh, this covid uh, situation was bad till 2020 with re- he was going to real learning center and he was working as a data entry operator uh, like all these corporate companies used to give their uh, data entries to these children and they used to work from morning to evening and process it and give it back to the company they were doing corporate companies have are doing well with these children but the thing is because of this covid everything is stopped the school is closed and from past one and a half years he is sitting at home from march he is sitting at home so what i am doing is let him have this knowledge you know let it not go because of which i am training him at home with microsoft word uh, microsoft excel word and data entry and keeping keeping him updated so that whenever the situation becomes better he has an opportunity to work back again in the same way how he was working before so uh, the companies are doing well they are giving opportunities to children who are you know able to grasp and do this kind of job could they do something better i feel they can do something better because uh, not all the see there are no see there is only one the one or two centers here in mangalore where uh, i don't know about in bangalore but in mangalore there are hardly two to three centers where they have only 15 to 20 children who have been trained to do this kind of a 
work. I feel, you know, you should have more centers like this and more children should be more special, able, uh, you know, speci specially able children should be uh, exposed to this kind of uh, environment where they know that they can do something and they feel good about it. So I feel that, you know, these corporate companies should come forward as they know that their data entries are done by these uh, children. They should uh, encourage the cities to have more centers like this so that, you know, more children can get uh, this exposure and they also can have their own uh, working life and have the pleasure of that. This is what I feel. That's wonderful. Okay, Rekha, we won't take much of your time. Five more, two yes. more questions. Yes. How do you think a platform like Hoopsters can help in this whole scenario? Yes, Hoops, Hoopsters is very good because I've been, uh, I've, I've been seeing you are, uh, you know, calling different people with the different uh, knowledge and different skills and you're training, the, you are uh, taking their interview and we are getting to know how uh, we can like, we can connect some certain things we can connect with our life and we can see how we can use this in our life. So, so by you calling me today and uh, asking me questions about my journey of my son, there will be some audience who can connect themselves and they can help. So you are doing a very wonderful job by right? calling people from different fields and helping people from different fields to take some tips and make their life better. Thank you. Thank you, Rekha. I think I won't take much of your time. I think really yes. took it off this. But I would really appreciate your support to Hoopsters. Yes. And Thank we look so forward much. to more. Yes. We need yes. a lot of, lot of support. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we'll keep in touch and you keep in touch too. Definitely. Thank you very Definitely. much. And I would like thank to thank so all the participants. I mean, you guys really stayed through the stuff with the one and a half hours of talk. I think I should thank you too. And please do spread the whole story of what Hoopster is doing and, you know, also what people like Rekha are doing. Because this needs to reach to a larger audience. You know. People should understand it. What we lack is motiv we lack is motivation. We lack inspiration. You know, we lack stories which need to be told, which need to be listened to. So... Since you guys have shown interest of coming and actually going, staying through the whole talk, I'm sure you could be ambassadors of these things, you know, and uh, spread the word around. You can do your bit. Connect us to people who have stories to say. Rekha, even if you know somebody else who, who has got some stories to say, please connect yes, them to Yes, definitely, us. definitely. There are lots of, lots of wonderful stories. And uh, yeah, we are trying our best. Let's see where it goes. Thank you very much, Rekha. Thank, Thank you so very much. much. Thank have you a lovely so much. Evening. Yes. I hope uh, I have not offended anybody by me telling my frank opinion no, 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 no. my journey of life. No, I'll tell you one thing, Rekha. What at Hoopsters we are doing is we are not going to be apologetic. Yes. Okay, we'll tell our story the way it should be told. Mm -hmm. Because the problem is everyone has been sugarcoating every issue. Everyone is trying to be diplomatically correct. You know, and so in the yes. process, a lot of good information is getting lost. Yes. A lot of motivation in laws. Well, everyone's trying to say, you know, you want to hear this, we'll tell you what you want to hear. You know, we'll tell our story the way you want to hear. I don't think Hoopsters is into that. Yes. We want to tell the story the way it is. Yes. It's a bitter pill most of the times, you know, and I think people should accept it yes. and uh, take it further. The idea is, can we motivate people, inspire people, do good things around them? Okay. Thank yes. you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Yes. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye. Thank you, everybody.